Okay. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. This is Chad Daddy here. Really need to change my name. Anyway, <clears throat> as promised, I would make a Rasigeth guide. Um, I'm just going to be watching the footage and talking over it. Um, there might be some pausing and stuff like that, just to explain what I'm doing. Um, I felt like this was a better concept than any other option I had available to me. <clears throat> so, uh, one thing before I start is a lot of people who play this fight or have played this fight um, are of the attitude as a Disc Priest that if you get the bomb during your ramp, it is over. Uh, this video is going to show you that that is not true. Um, and um, take with that what you will. I, uh, I'm obviously not here to say that I came up with some insane tech here, but... You can always position better, um, and humility is important in my mind. Um, it's kind of what led me here, I think, that um, I knew that it was possible. I just had to kind of play better. It was harsh at first, but I'll show you how to do it. Alright, <clears throat> so on pull, the first thing that I usually did was um, something that I didn't do very well here on the kill pull. I usually move to my side, as you can see here. Just to pause and talk a little bit about this. Um, I'm assigned in the, I think it's the Liquid Weak Aura, to always get to the left side. Or in this case, when we're looking at the boss the wrong way, the green side. So I would always start kind of more towards that side on the at the start of the pull. And the first thing I did was always generate a stack of Harsh Discipline Penance. And then you don't need to do this, but then I tried to get a few additional stacks towards my next Penance as well at the start. So we'll see me do that here. So this is the Harsh Discipline Penance. I'm kind of planning in my head now my ramp. I start here at 8 seconds, but you actually want to start this ramp at 9 to 10 seconds to overlap the sparks that happen after. With PI, you always have enough haste here to go super wide. And I found that when I was standing close to the boss, um, when the bombs had just about 2 seconds left, I could cast Light's Wrath and have it hit as the damage came in. And just as on Broodkeeper, I save Halo for the tail end here, so that it hits the sparks. <clears throat> okay. So, um, just gonna pause here. This is the next ramp. So, I Evangelist in the first bomb set, and then I Rapture the next. So, um, the way that I had this set up for me, is that you could either look at timers which for me was a bit more of a hassle than just looking at the Hurricane Wing cast. I felt that the optimal time to start my ramp was when the Hurricane Wing cast had exactly two seconds left. Um, otherwise, you can look at your timers and you can see that I am on 38 seconds now. Um, so you are ramping as you're getting pushed back and this first wings you can live without any help. If you do have help, nothing changes. It just makes it easier. But if, like me, you have no help here, you can see what I do to kind of deal with the pushback and the bombs coming after. So, as you can see here, I'm moving back to my position. I'm assigned to be on green if I get the bomb, so I'm ready in case I get it. I cannot use the excuse that it screwed my ramp. I finish my ramp here. I am quite far out, so I use the personal. In this case, a very aggressive usage of pin suppression. Alright, <clears throat> so... Now we're moving into the next ramp, which is a non-rapture, non-evangelism ramp, where we just cycle Schism, Shadow Covenant, and Radiances. The way I played this was I wanted to hit the bomb damage specifically, the Sparks is too sketchy even with movement help. Um, and I applied some single target atones, and then after I feared, which I missed here, I would do Radiance, Radiance into early Schism, then Shadow Covenant, and then I would blast the damage. You can play that part a bit better than I did there, I think. Okay. And I wait a little bit here before I give us another pause here. Okay. So, uh, your next evangelism. And this is for the bomb set, or rather the, the fourth bomb set that occurs um, around the two-minute mark. So, for this one, um, obviously the timers are a bit different here than your rapture. Um, the window is a bit uh, larger, but also not as much at the same time because of Light's Wrath. You kind of want to hit your Light's Wrath as your main damage ability for, this, uh, for the static charges. So the way I played this was um, I started my ramp, my Evangelism ramp, at the Hurricane Wing cast being three seconds off. Um, so 
you can also look at the timer and it's 1 minute and 48. Um, there's There might be a little bit more deviance there because I'm kind of playing around the decimals as well in the Hurricane Wing cast. Not something to worry about too much. I don't think it matters too much since you're also kind of going to change a lot of that with uh, with haste. Um, so let's watch this ramp and see how I play. It's going to be very reminiscent of earlier ramps. I'm ramping as I'm doing this. This is my gateway as well. And I shield and then I use flash shield for the last two atones. Finish this off and as you can see I am on my predetermined position. So had I gotten a bomb there I would not have been out of position which is very important. <clears throat> okay. So once again thinking ahead a little bit here. Rapture ramp coming up next. Same exact logic as we used for the first rapture ramp. I ramped a bit too early here for my liking but it doesn't matter too much. I think I still end up hitting most of my atonements with my ramp. In fact, I think I even um, was too far away here. But I got the bomb, which is a perfect display. I'm very close to my assigned spot. I um, messed up my rotation a little bit. Um, just a cautionary tale there. You do not want to Shadow Covenant before you Schism. You Schism, Shadow Covenant, and then you hit Mind Blast into Penance while you move back. And then we cycle our Radiance here at the end. <clears throat> cool. Boss moves up, and this is kind of the push timer. Um, you can delay that a little bit, I think. Um, I don't want to push super late into that cast. So, <clears throat> um, I'm going to just pause this here, and I'm going to talk a bit about the intermission. So, um, the phase one intermission, the way most guilds do this, is that you have the first ad set have the Celet cast a Shattering Shroud, and the third one. So you have two healing absorbs that matter for you as a Disc Priest, um, and then you skip the second one by nuking down the Celet. My guild, for some reason, ended up uh, not doing that. They skipped the first one, and then we did the second and third. This makes it harder for you as a Disc Priest. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about what you want to do if you're playing Disc Priest on this fight, and you're not playing with a guild like mine. Um, I think the more uh, like normal like way you would play the fight um, is what I'm going to be talking about. Um, but there's also some kind of general knowledge here that you can apply when I do my ramp for the second and third. So for the first ramp here, you would not do what I do here with the Radiance and such. You just save it. Um, and the first thing you would want to do here, I'm actually going to pause this in a little bit so, to show you. At this point, we see a mage here in his Rune of Power at the edge. In case we get the breath on us like just now, um, you get kind of screwed over if you're Evangelism here. So what you want to do is when you land, you want to move over to where that mage is. And you get stand, you can, if there's another mage in your group, you do not stack up with them. Stand far away and apart from each other. And then you uh, kind of finish your ramp. And the way you can do this is you can just apply some single target atones while you run out. And then just do one radiance into evangelism. Okay. And another thing that I want to really talk about when it comes to these ramps is that obviously if that is the case, you're going to have evangelism for this first Shattering Shroud. Um, ideally, this is where you rip your Shadow Fiend. Um, you will have probably a PI on somebody, maybe, I don't know. It depends on if you hold it for Phase 1. Um, but one thing you will not have, in my experience, is Slight's Wrath. I don't think it will be up. Um, it's really tight, um, and the like your second Evangelism in Phase 1 is, generally speaking, a little bit delayed in a good world, I think. Um, and so is the Light's Wrath, if you want to time it properly. So, but that's okay, you don't need it, and I'll explain why. So, a lot of these ads need to die uh, quite quickly, obviously, um, and as your progression happens, I'm going to show you that now. These ads get low very fast, and when they do, you are going to utilize Shadower Death inside your Shadow Covenant for your Evangelism ramp. This is just ridiculously powerful. You can send 100k crits that just, like, completely delete the shield. So that's very powerful and worth mentioning. So now I'm actually doing my ramp here. You would not do this, keep that in mind. Most skills obviously skip the um, the uh, second one. But as you can see here, I use Halo, Dark, Reprimand, and then I spam Shadowbird Death with Shadow Covenant into, um, into my Schism target. So that's a lot of damage. And I did tons of healing there. Um, and then this is the third ad, and then once again I am ramping. You would not have this situation, but you would still do this ramp. This is the third ad. So I'm going to show you what I do here um, by pausing for a second here. So, obviously, 
you want to do to use evangelism on your first ramp in the intermission, and then you want to use rapture on the third um, adds. And so this is the like last ad set in the um, intermission. And the way you play this is just the same as you would play the first one. I think as a Disc Priest, you can absolutely just stand out just to make sure you don't get the breath on you. Um, your guild might do it a bit differently. They might have, like, you know, you should probably bring it up to your officers. Uh, you know, let them know that you want to be out, for example, um, just to, like, guarantee that you can hit your ramp. If they can't accommodate that, you can probably find a way around it. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a lot harder to break the shield. Um, anyway, as you can see, I'm out here. Uh, the damage is gonna, or the shield is going to come in. I'm a bit late here, and the reason for that is because my Shadow Covenant is not quite yet up. Um, this is not going to be a problem for you, because you are not ramping for the second shield like I am. Alright, um, but once again, and I want you to see this, we are utilizing the fact that we are using Shadow Covenant Shadower Deaths into these adds. And just the sheer amount of healing that does is ridiculous. Fantastic. Right, and that's the end of phase one intermission. So that's the hardest parts of the fight done. So, phase two. Um, I'm gonna just make a little bit of a note here. So when you get into phase two, the way that I wanted to do it is that I wanted to land on the phase two platform with three stacks on my harsh discipline. So that it only took one smite cast to generate my penance. I did not want it to run out when I was ramping here. I felt like this was very important. Um, it's like one of those small things that can matter, keeps consistency, and makes sure that you have a dark reprimand running for the um, for the first shield ramp, which is what we're thinking about right now. It's next on the timer. Absorb shield one. That's what we're looking at. Uh, one little note here as well. While we're watching me ramp for this shield, um, I want to do like something. That is probably not very normal, but I want to s tell people not to do what you're watching. So, these shields don't last very long after the nerfs, and I adapted to this on the fly and kind of made my ramps very aggressive. You can see this, I want to have my atonements active as early as possible almost, and I think that the problem with this, of course, is that people can end up dying if the shields just last a little bit longer than usual, and I think that this is just not worth it. Play it less aggressively, start your ramp around 43 seconds on the Absorb Shield timer, and you will be moving whilst using Renews and Shields, so your ramp isn't compromised. Very important. Alright. So now we have a Stormwave here, and I'm going to talk about this just really quickly. So, uh, first of all, that Stormwave is my Q. So the way that I played this fight was that I used Rapture for the sparks coming up now. Um, most Disc Priests end up using this Rapture for the second Absorb Shield. I felt like this was pointless. After the nerfs, the second Absorb Shield just kind of disappears, like most of them. <clears throat> so kind of pointless in my mind. Um, and I felt like this Rapture did a lot of work in a department that I think might be less probably overall throughput, but I think it was more productive for progress. So. Um, on my side, we initially lacked some spot healing. Um, a lot of people who got the fulminating charge on our side ended up being just kind of cranked and almost dying before they got any help. And I felt like that was probably more of a pressure point than the second shield ever would be. So I ended up rapturing here to keep people who had the charge safe. And you can see me there. I have raptured and shielded a evoker with the uh, debuff. This matters, and it's not something to just kind of shy away from. It's uh, really, really good. A um, little bit of extra health there. Fantastic. Um, so I ramp here, and we get these we get these charges, and after the nerfs, uh, Disc Priests can fade them away with the general talent tree um, uh, tech. Um, you just use a Phantasm, it's called, the uh, fade uh, root removal. Um, then we do a little bit of a ramp there. After that, I don't do a lot. Um, I'm kind of just setting up, preparing for the uh, second shield. I play very cautiously here. I don't want to fuck up my penances. And now we're moving into my second ramp for the shield. And we'll see here kind of the consequences of what can happen when we play these ramps so aggressively. And what also happens with our ramp when we do get an unfavorable mechanic at the same time as we are in the radiant stage of our ramp. I'm going to be getting the uh, red mark here, 
and I'm gonna be wanting to move into the middle, but the problem is, of course, that I'm in the radiant stage of my ramp, so everything is just thrown completely off. And the reason for this was because I wanted to hit this small little narrow window where we were dealing with the shield, to make sure that I was helping with both the damage and the healing. But this just doesn't matter, as I stated before. Please play it better than this. Make sure that you are still using your single, single target atones, if not the few last ones, while you're moving in, then finish off your ramp. Even if you're late into prog, they will probably be it will probably work just perfectly. Um, another little note while we're watching this, um, healers are not affected by inversion, so don't worry about that. Um, your raid leader might call for it, don't worry, we are not affected by it as healers. So for this uh, spark set that comes after the second shield, I'm actually going to just pause when we get this, yeah. So for that spark set that we get after the second shield, I also opted to cycle my schism. Um, you should also use your uh, Shadow Covenant here, but I was a bit late on my ramp. But this is kind of like, you don't, you know, it wasn't my... I kind of played a bit cautiously, I think, uh, but I shouldn't do that. You, you can just go quite wide here um, if you want to, depends on your mana, of course. Um, uh, cycle Schism, Shadow Covenant, and make sure that you get out in time, so this one can just kind of crank. Um, you have quite a time left, I think, until your next ramp, so you're not doing a lot, really. Um, what I ended up doing in this phase for a lot of progress was um, I ended up using Rapture. Yeah, exactly here. You'll see. Um, what I did was I moved a bit closer to the middle here with this Rapture. This is for the Fulminating Charges into the Storm Wave. And I tried to hit the people that had Fulminating Charge debuff. Um, and I tried to like kind of keep people healthy. I didn't even use Schism there, but usually I would. <clears throat> um, okay, and I'm gonna talk about this in a second, this set. Um, I think I need to talk about all of this in one go. Okay, so, this is the third Absorb Shield. As you just saw there, we have a lot going on. So, the second Rapture in, we'll start with that, in, in Phase 2, is quite important. Um, you do not have to use it the way I did at all. I think that there is... Um, just way better uses for it, like using it a bit earlier for the first um, uh, ramp and then having it back up for the storm wave and actually cycling a Radiance Charge there. I think that's way better every time. Um, you can also do uh, such things as the General Disc Priests do and use your first Rapture in Phase 2 on the second shield. Completely fine, um, probably also quite a bit better, um, but this is just kind of like how I ended up playing it. Um, Okay, so now the next part. Uh, what happens for the third shield is you first get sparks, you deal with it, and then you immediately move out to your assigned position for the third absorb shield. This timing is quite rough to hit, and you need to kind of be in the right state of mind. You need to be very focused, looking at your timers and your position, and making sure you are moving and watching the timers so that you don't miss this ramp. I think the third shield on our progress was the roughest. I think it lasted the longest. It's why I think that it actually matters here that you hit a ramp that can crank. We'll see that here as well. And then the last note that I want to talk about here as well is that I got the um, I got the blue side this time, or rather the blue marker this time, which means that I'm standing out. I'm not moving in. Um, and I was lucky to have people kind of around me, so they kind of got to me, I think, here. Um, but if we look back, for example, when I had um, the red mark on the last one, I think that one thing that I would do is watch exactly where in your ramp you end up getting that marker. Um, let's say that with your haste you start your ramp at 8 seconds and it's just really hard to kind of salvage that ramp if, if it kind of lands in the middle of your radiances, then it's completely fine to just ramp a little bit earlier, or ramp a little bit later, so that you're still using your single single target atonements when you're moving into the middle. Um, I think that being able to adapt like that is super big, and I don't think that you should kind of look at me for that. I think that that's something that you feel out while you're progressing this boss. Um, okay, anyway, continuing with the third Storm Shield. Okay, missing some atonements, but that's okay. Just cranking. Again, we don't get inverted, so we're just kind of cruising back here, doing all types of healing. So that's phase two. Phase two, quite easy. Uh, not really a lot happening in my mind. Um, 
Phase 2 intermission is a little bit sketchy. There's a lot going on in this one, in my mind. Um, it's still quite similar to uh, Heroic, but it's uh, way more punishing, I think. And uh, damage from the adds teleporting is quite substantial. I felt like I ended up playing this boss, or rather this phase, very poorly compared to how I wanted to play it. Um, so I think that I'm going to talk about how I played it, and I want to talk about what I would improve in like a re-clear, or if I progress it now. <clears throat> so, that was the first teleport, um, and so the way that I play this with my Rapture timings is that for the second teleport, I would use my Rapture Ramp here. Um, and when you're taking this gateway here, make sure that you're not taking it through balls. So I was very cautious here. I was very, like, um, apprehensive, and I think that's better, because you have quite a lot of time. Um, and then you can see me here kind of cranking. There's, as, I, as you saw there, there's a lot of damage, actually. Um, the teleport hurts a lot, so lots of value. Um, and we're going to be killing that ad. We only have one left. So... Here comes a part that I want to talk about a little bit longer. So what we're going to get now is this ad is going to teleport. We're going to bait the next breath. It's going to go somewhere through like the middle-ish. Or rather, yeah, kind of through the middle. Um, and the way that I played this was I wanted to have... I, I couldn't use Evangelism um, because I wanted to move this further forward in, in phase uh, 3. But I could use two Radiances here, so what I wanted to do was I wanted to hit as many people as possible, especially Squishies. And I wanted to hit them with a Shadow Covenant empowered, Schism empowered, Shadow or Death. This ended up being very difficult, um, and the main reason for that is because I felt like I my positioning in this phase was just very bad. So I'll explain this and I'll talk about how that happened. And I want you to do better than me here. So as you see here, we baited the breath, and it's kind of cutting, his, cutting us off in the middle here. It's okay to be caught off guard a bit like this, like some of us, but as a healer, I don't think it kind of is. Regardless, I only got one Shadower Death off because I was late. So, let's talk about that. The way that you want to play that fight is after you are finished with your Rapture Ramp, it will naturally be timed such that you can run through the, through the middle again and get to the melee, melee group on the add to finish off your ramp. And what you will have done by then is already reapplied some atonements, most likely. Uh, single target atonements that is so you can just go straight into radiances and kind of blast the ad keeping people healthy with shadow or deaths um that's kind of the end of phase two intermission there's not a lot going on in that fight or rather this part of the fight um but that's something that i did wrong and that i hope that people that watch this can do better than me so going into phase three um also quick disclaimer about this phase um i initially assigned myself to hit uh, damage events one kind of set later but i ended up changing this because i felt like early prog our dps was so good it would make me lose a cooldown and we would have also lost a holy priest cooldown so we kind of moved cooldowns back a bit but it doesn't really matter it, the only thing it changes is that i did not use evangelism in phase two intermission and i think most disc priests kind of don't from what i've seen um do with that what you will but, phase 3. Um, at the start, just DPS. I even used Shadow Covenant for DPS here, I think. Really good. These uh, tank blast mechanics should not actually deal that much damage. So we have the first one here, and I just do not think it hits us for almost anything at all. If that does end up happening, you should talk to your tanks about their cooldowns. Um, because that's just not it. So, first magnetic pull charge here. i show that actually again. Actually, no, I'll do that. Um, but anyway, so we get pulled in, and we take quite a bit of damage. Um, these are kind of your main ramps, in my opinion. You can uh, ramp for storm waves as well. Um, but the uh, the pull charges are very, very good, because there is very few specs that can deal with it as well as Disc Priests can, I think. Um, okay. So, I'm going to talk about this ramp. So, I ramped, I Rapture Ramped for the first pull charge. I am Evangelism Ramping for the second pull charge. And we'll see how this lines up later. So we get the pull charge. I missed my Light's Wrath there, but we are pushing the boss damage. So I had Light's Wrath's mid-air. This helped me kind of deal with the damage mid-air. Right. And once again, I'm just looking at the timers. 
And I'm planning my next ramp. I did not get a lot of prog in this phase, so... My guess is as good as yours, if this is the best way to play it. I felt like this was probably the best, looking at just the raw kind of damage taken in this phase. Um, you see me here, utilizing Shadow or Death is always so, so strong. I got helped out of those charges. <clears throat> okay. So, i to talk about the next ramp here. Um, so, the way that I think about this is that Pull Charge 1-2 is basically just Rapture Evangelism. And then the third one is just your Double Radiance Shadow Covenant cycle. And then the fourth one is back at it again. So we are now doing the fourth uh, Pull Charge, and this is Rapture Ramp. And damage is just accumulating, and it's just accumulating. Um, a lot of people have, like, um, but high stacks here. So these ramps are starting to matter more and more. We're still in Execute, so we have tons of power in our ramps. Dark Reprimand and then Shadow Bird Deaths just completely top the raid. Such, such a strong ramp. So we get one Storm Wave here, and now we get into the next stage here. And this is another part that I want to talk about. You'll most likely see this in your prog as well. Um, but the third Storm Wave is, in my opinion, when the Storm Waves start getting very sketchy. This is where we lost the most people the times we did get into Phase 3. And I found it super important to hit a large ramp here. So this naturally became my evangelism ramp with Shadow Field. So you'll see this kind of hit here. Um, and I missed some atonements on it. And you'll see that those people will almost die. You can do such heavy lifting on this. I think it matters a lot. Alright. And the thing that I would say here is that I think I was too late with this ramp. That's okay. I'm being pulled out into this stuff, but that's okay. I'm just doing so much healing here that it kind of didn't matter. Um, but I wanted you to see at least that the people that did not have atonement either almost died or did die. That ramp can just carry. So important you hit it if you intend to kind of do anything kind of like what I did here. So, that is the boss killed. Um, before the video ends though, I do want to mention... Um, I've had quite a bit of... Um, comments recently, or rather, uh, quite a lot for me at least, with some very heartwarming messages um, kind of complimenting me for making this. I just want to make it clear as well that, you know, obviously I'm very grateful. Um, but I am new to this and I'm trying my best. But the reason that I'm making this is entirely because I want people to get better, to have fun, and to play the spec that I love. So hopefully, if you have issues, you do get back to me, you do make a comment, you can even add me on Discord, and I'll put that down in the description. Because I want people to be able to get as much help as they, uh, in my mind, deserve. Um, but anyway, that is the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'm sorry if it is a little bit um, stressful. I did not use a script for this video. Um, anyway, have a good one. Goodbye.